You see, I'm going to be speaking about the Egyptians that you see today. You shall never see them no more. I'm in prayer and the Lord says, I need you to go read Exodus 14. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder what's there, you know? And I open and I'm shocked that Exodus 14 speaks about God telling Moses. So the whole saga has gone and gone and gone. And only in chapter 14 does God begin to say to Moses, you see, today is my day of being glorified. Today is my day of being glorified because what I'm about to do today, I have never done it and it shall be a memorial. And the Bible in chapter 14 says, then God tells Moses that already the Egyptians have been, uh, sorry, the the, the, the Israelites have already been released, right? Because after the 10 plagues, uh, it was just unbearable for Pharaoh anymore to keep them. Amen. And then God in chapter 14 then says to Moses, finally all the jazz is going to be sealed today. I came with a prophetic word today. I need you to note the date for today. Because today I'm saying the Egyptians that you have been seeing all your life. Today you shall never see them no more. Ah, I wish I was speaking to people that believe. I wish I was speaking to believers. I wish I was speaking to people that know what I'm talking about. Hey, Egyptians are not necessarily, they are not necessarily in Egypt. So, so, so when, when Pharaoh realizes that uh, the, 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 the Israelites have gone, the Bible says in chapter 14, when he is then reported that they have now left for real, the Bible says he becomes, uh, he changes his mind. And he says, I'm going to pursue them. Today I'm going to speak to human beings in this place. Amen. Because, you know, you know when you are on the verge of a breakthrough and the pursuer says, I'm going to still pursue you. I'm going to be talking about uh, the Egyptians that uh, have been a part of your life uh, and they've been very much determined uh, that they cannot release you because you have been providing uh, cheap labor. You have been adding to the group of the sorrowful. You've been adding to the group of the lost. You've just been adding. You have been part of the enemy's camp. And he has been finding it very amusing that you go to church and you come out the same. You go to church, you come out worse. So the amuser, the accuser of the brethren has been looking at you and saying, I am going to harden you. But what he doesn't know is that there is a season for everything. There is a time for everything. Solomon says there is a time for laughter and there is a time for tears. There is a time for joy and there is a time for pain. I came to announce that today is today. The Egyptians that have been harassing your life, the Egyptians that have stolen your dignity, the taskmasters that have been sitting upon you. Hey, today is the day that the Lord has made and you shall see them no more. I like how Moses phrases it in my Bible. He doesn't say, I think in 1414, he, when, 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 when the Israelites look at the back and they realize that the Egyptians are pursuing them, the Bible says they became very scared. They were now worried that, Lord, we have just been requesting for three days to go and worship the Lord. Oh, child of the living God, even though the Egyptians have been a part of your life, have been harassing you, 
The Lord has been demanding a worshiper. The Lord demands worshiper in the midst of the storms. The Lord demands a worshiper in the midst of the crisis. The Lord demands a worshiper in the midst of the divorce. The Lord demands a worshiper in the midst of financial crisis. He demands a worship. So the Bible says in 1414, uh, Moses says to the people, today you will see God being glorified as long as you keep your mouth shut and you watch in silence and allow the man of war to arise. I say there is a man of war. His name is Jehovah Rapha. His name is Jehovah. His name is the only, only deliverer there is in the person of Jesus Christ. Today, he says, the Egyptians that you have been seeing, Which means the Egyptians have been there for a long time. Now I was very just keen to know what does Egypt represent? Because initially in the book of Matthew 2, I think 14, uh, Egypt represents uh, a place of, of refuge. Uh, when Joseph is engaged to be married uh, and to marry, hallelujah, who is already conceived uh, a child by the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, he, the angel of the Lord comes to him uh, and the angel of the Lord says, I need you to take the baby. I need you to flee unto Egypt. Hallelujah. Oh, I Africans, if only you know who you were in the scheme of God, if only you know you African continent, who you are. The Bible says, so Egypt represents initially for me a place of, of refuge. Joseph wakes up at the angel's command, he takes the baby Mary, I mean the baby Jesus with the mother Mary, and they flee. Amen. Can we say amen? amen. They flee. Hallelujah. We see in the same vein, Egypt representing a place of refuge. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, before, before chapter 12 or before chapter 15, Abraham found himself taking refuge in, in Egypt because there was famine in the land. Amen. And yet, the reality and the larger part of Egypt represents oppression. Egypt represents oppression because in the book of Deuteronomy, even in the book of Exodus, in chapter 3, when God invites Moses via the burning bush, God says to Moses, I have heard the cries. Oh, I wish I could be talking to people that have cried in this place. We are Jabu life, we are so hard that you can't even cry. I'm saying, Jesus, God says to Moses, I have heard the cry of my people. And he says, not only have I heard their cry, I have also seen with my eyes the oppression the taskmasters that are raised. And then I look and I say, Lord, so Egypt represents the oppressors that arise in our lives. Egypt represents the oppression that gets orchestrated in the spirit realm by whatever the doors or by whatever the means that the enemy finds useful. If I had people that were in the encounter, they would be saying a louder amen. So Egypt does represent a place of bondage. You see, these Israelites were the chosen of God. They were the prince and the princesses. But while they were in the land of oppression, they were the, the servants. 
while the servants were riding on the horse and the real human beings, the chosen of God, were walking bare feet, toiling, toiling for the Egyptians. It does not stop there. The enemy says, they are becoming stronger. So midwives are appointed to make sure that when a baby is a boy, that the, 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 the Egyptian midwives must strangle, must strangle the baby boy while they are coming out of their mothers in the delivery. Oh, child of God, the Lord is just speaking. The Lord is speaking today that the dreams that have been squandered by the enemy, he does not know that today was going to come, that today was going to be the day where the glory of God. I'm finishing off what God has started in 2018. 2018, God said it's going to be a supernatural manifestation. And people were expecting Lotto. So Egypt represents hardness of hearts. I say Egypt represents hard hearts. You see, Pharaoh was not an ordinary boy in Egypt. He was a king, which means he represented. So what was happening on the floor was a reflection of the heart of Pharaoh. Hallelujah. So Pharaoh is not an ordinary man. He is, he is above, whether he's the governor, whatever, but he's the highest authority at the time of Moses. He's the highest authority at the time of the oppression. And Egypt flourishes through oppression. So the Egyptians are representative of every harassment that you and I have ever experienced. These people are not, they have not been harassed. Ne? Again, Zela. I say Egypt represents a people that have just never received the fair deal in life. I don't know about you, but I know what it is to receive a plate full of not real food, but full of dog food. And when we are thinking, oh, I'm about just to rest, the enemy says, no, one plate is not enough. I'm going to put two of them and the two plates will still be full of uh, food that is eaten by swines. And he says, Shona Kona. And you're thinking, Lord, did I kill nobody? Did I kill? Am I a murderer? At least Moses, you were a murderer. And God still remembered to use you. You look, you compare yourself. And the enemy keeps on saying, I'm going to oppress you. But I have good news. I've got news today that the Egyptians that you have seen for a long time. You shall see them no more. I came to announce, I came to declare that every Egyptian, every mark of the Egyptian, every mark of the oppression, every mark of ridicule, every mark of embarrassment, every mark that causes you and I to lose dignity and to lose self-respect is going away. The beauty with the things of God is that even when you are going through jersey, it's never written on the face. 
But I'm saying I know that the taskmasters have been part of your life. Amen. And because they've been a part of your life, you have cried until tears do no longer make sense. You have prayed and it looks like prayer has not been sufficient. I don't know how many as the fast you have done and the demon keeps on looking at you. It keeps on claiming territory. But I came to announce as the mouthpiece of Jehovah that what he started doing in Jehovah reigns he is going to complete not another day but today I've come to seal I say I've come to seal I say I've come to seal in the sealing of the Holy Spirit I came to seal uh, as a mouthpiece of God uh, that whatever the chairs, uh, whatever the stealing, uh, whatever the barrenness, uh, whatever the poverty that comes uh, and is being represented uh, by Egypt, uh, whatever the pain, uh, whatever the hurt, uh, whatever the disgrace, uh, it is about uh, to pack its bags uh, and go and leave you alone. The world was established by the word of God. At the decreeing of a word, that word waits for manifestation. So I came to seal what God started in Jehovah Reigns in 2018. The supernatural manifestation, it has to come to an end. I am not entering January of 2019, not having my victory in my hand. I don't know my victory, but the Lord knows my victory. He says, I don't know how to pray. He says, I don't even know what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit that I'm aligned with, uh, that I'm running alongside with uh, says victory is going to be yours so I came to announce victory, ah there is a song that says victory is mine I say victory is yours uh, I say receive the victory I say receive the victory because it's going to be one favor to another, I say receive the victory, the demons of old, uh, the work of darkness uh, that has been going on in your life uh, when you go back home uh, it is a packing time and then the song says Lord whatever you're doing in the season please don't do it without me Lord don't do it without me oh Lord Whatever you're doing in the season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it. Don't do it without me. Hallelujah. If you are a man and you cannot go out with a, a horse pipe to your little garden, I'm going to call an altar call. Even if there are sprinklers, walk around the yard in Jesus as, a, as an owner of the house. Walk around the house. Declare your authority around the yard. Speak to the trees. Speak to the walls. Declare what you want to see. I'm talking about people that know who they are in God. I'm talking about the elect of God. Amen. But it is embarrassing to know what we have become. We claim to know the truth, but the actions are gory. If you are a mama that loves Jesus, just deal with the couches. Deal with the cushions. It's okay. You don't become less of a madam. It's a sign that you are saying, I am alive and I need life and I am a partaker. Everything that is under this house, it is under my subjection. I am the lady of the house. I am the man of the house. I am the elect of God. I have 
body I can jump I have mouth I can praise him I have knees I can kneel and glorify God I'm giving you signals when things are out of order that you can see that the button is torn and instead of going and buying a button you look for the pins hey can i speak to human beings here instead of buying come on child of god i'm speaking deliverance i'm speaking about the little foxes speaking about the little foxes that when they are in their multitudes when you can begin to look at them, they are no longer small foxes, but they are signals that the oppressor is in the house. They are a signal that the oppressor is beginning to laugh at you. They are a signal that even things that you have power over, they begin to look at you and they say, what Jesus are you talking about? Until you are angry. I was telling somebody yesterday and I say, oh, you want calling? A calling is a lonely place. You want, you mean real calling is the loneliest of places. It's the loneliest of places because you, you become peculiar and you begin to be jumping around the chickens and the chicken says, oh, shut up, you eagle, just shut up. And the more they just shut, they say, shut up, you soar and you go up. And they say, mara, 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 mara. Whether they can say mara or not mara, an eagle will always remain an eagle. And chickens will always feel uncomfortable in the presence of an eagle. But I'm talking about the Egyptians that you see today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Every affliction, when it leaves, it leaves having challenged you. If it was your ways that you needed to change, that affliction challenges you. That affliction reminds you as well of who you truly are. That you are not a doormat. You are a fully sensed up human being. That has got ears, that has got eyes, that has got a voice that you can choose to say, Lord, though I am in Egypt, I hear you demanding me for a praise. I'm encouraging somebody that even though we are still there, he demands a praise. There is nowhere when it is tough, God says, oh no shame. All those that are experiencing toughness, let them not worship me. He says, the more tougher, the more you learn to worship me. Is the toughness coming from God? Not necessarily. It does not come from God. It comes from the planner of evil. It comes from Lucifer who plans. He is a crazy spirit. Hallelujah. He owns the powers and the principalities. He owns rulers in the form of human beings. He raises them up in your life. And they become oppressive. And you say, Lord, what is this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it is not in the form of a human being, he just brings sickness. And you keep on saying, but Lord, by your stripes, you said I was healed. I came to proclaim from today that anybody in this house and anyone that is listening under this unctioning, if there is sickness in your body, Jehovah the healer says today it ends. I say the harassment that is in the bodies uh, by his stripes uh, we were long healed uh, so what is this rubbish oh god uh, why are our bodies tormented uh, i came to tell the tormentor i came to announce to the oppressor that sickness and disease uh, is not your portion it's not your portion it's not your portion and if you know that it is not your portion then you stop entertaining it how do you stop entertaining it you speak the word of god you give god the glory while we are waiting for the manifestation up until when the manifestation comes you have even forgotten that your knee was sore can i get people in this house can i get people that are saying lord ah take me back give me back 
20 more years. Give me back 30 more years and make me feel like a 50 year old. I came to proclaim life in abundance in this place. HIV and AIDS, you are a lying spirit. Cancer, you are a lying spirit. Oh, you schizophrenia, you are a lying spirit. You bipolar, you are a lying spirit. Every form of sickness and disease, you depressive spirit, uh, go depress yourself, uh, lose yourself from the people of God. Uh, you anxiety spirit, uh, go and be anxious uh, by the pigs. Uh, go look for swines uh, and make the anxiety to be experienced by them, uh, but not the people of God. You spirit of sorrow, leave the children of God. I say you spirit of sorrow, you memoring spirit, get out from the vessels of God. Get out from the clean vessels. They have been occupied by Holy Spirit. Stop memoring in their heart. Stop causing complaint. Stop making them to live in the past. The past is no longer there. Deliverance is our portion. Oh, child of God, I came to shine the light of God over your lives. Where there is darkness, I am releasing the light of Jesus. I am releasing the light of life. The devil is a liar. I will not bow down to no foreign God. There is only one Jesus. There is only one Christ that came out of the grave and he had a new name. We no longer call him Jesus, but we call him Jesus the Christ. In case I'm, you're thinking I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. Because some of you are looking so flip and tired uh, as if you don't have issues. Uh, I came to announce to the issues uh, that your body is even, has even been declared uh, that you're diabetic. Uh, what is diabetism uh, doing in your body when Jesus died on that cross? have been declared uh, that we have a heart problem. I don't know what is called uh, when the heart begins to beat uh, in chunks. Uh, come on, heart of God, uh, hear the voice of Jehovah. Hey, the Lord of the Sabbath uh, has come to heal us today. Uh, the Lord of the Sabbath uh, has come to strengthen us today. Uh, the Lord of the Sabbath uh, is the healer on this Sunday. You can receive right in your home. I say you can receive right in your couch. If you don't have, uh, you can receive wherever you are. Hey, this is a season uh, when the Lord was by the mountain uh, and the tempter kept on uh, visiting him. Hallelujah. And saying you are hungry. And because we have power, tell the stones uh, to become bread. Uh, I'm riding on the power that men shall not live by bread alone, uh, but by every word that proceeds uh, from the mouth of God. Uh, what am I doing? I'm releasing the word of power, the word of Jehovah. Keep your silent, keep your cool, and let the enemy keep on backing up until the enemy cannot back no more. While you keep your cool, Jesus is going to deal with them. <laughs>